All right, hello. All right, shout there too. All right, so we're all talking a lot of, about molecular stuff in this chapter. This chapter will basically cover a lot of the molecular intro you guys need for, for physio, okay? So hopefully you guys have been through this before in your basic biology classes in high school, et cetera. Okay. So share screen. Screen one. Okay. So uh, molecules and bonds. Okay. So is it, and this will probably be the first part out two lectures. I don't want to make this up a little bit. Okay. Um, organic molecules, by definition, have to contain carbon, okay, uh, and hydrogen, okay. Um, but carbon is the most important thing. Carbon, the, the number of bonds that carbon forms, uh, is four. So every carbon can bond to four things, which means you can create very large structures that way, okay. Okay, uh, biomolecules are organic molecules that exist in living organisms or are made by living organisms. Okay, and there are four major groups, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and lipides. For each group, you have to know what they look like and what they do. Okay, so most of them, all actually all of them contain these three. Proteins and nucleotides contain other stuff, okay. Okay, so first thing um, is fatty acids. Okay, fatty acids are long chains of carbon atoms bind primarily to hydrogen with a carboxy group or acid group at the very end. So here you'll see a fatty acid. So a fatty acid, okay, is all carbon. So this big, big, big long chain of, of carbons with one fat, one acid group at the end. So fatty, okay, and then acid. Okay, so that, well, that's what makes that fatty acid. Fatty acid comes in two forms, really. Saturated and unsaturated. Okay, uh, these are saturated. Notice there are no double bonds here in carbons except for fatty acid. Uh, some about the acid portion of the fatty acid, but the fatty part is all straight carbons and hydrogens, and each carbon is saturated with as many hydrogens as possible. Okay, that's where the term saturated fatty acid comes from. All the carbons are saturated. Okay, a unsaturated fatty acid, so here is one form of it, a mono, mono means one. Right, mono unsaturated fatty acid, there is one double bond, and that means these two are missing hydrogens. Okay, um, so there's two hydrogens missing here, there's one double bond, so mono unsaturated fatty acid, and then these are poly unsaturated. Poly means Anything more than one, so two, three, five, etc. Um, three and five are common numbers, um, but uh, polyunsaturated, so one, two, three, okay. Um, but the definition is two or more, okay. Uh, so polyunsaturated fatty acids, okay. Um, Oops. Okay, so the formation of fatty acid, the formation of something called triglyceride. Okay, tri means three. Okay, glyceride means things that are attached to glycerol. So you have this little alcohol thing called glycerol. Okay, um, so this is glycerol. Um, Glycerol is an alcohol, so there's an OH group alcohol, so glycerol here. Okay, and then you attach fatty acids to them. 
Okay, so we attached one fatty acid. It is a model, that's right. You attach two as a diglyceride. You attach three, okay, it is a triglyceride. Okay. Um, when you look at your blood sugar, uh, blood um, fatty acid profile, it's all in the form of triglycerides. So when they measure your blood, they'll give you a triglyceride reading, okay, which is what most of your fatty acids are, okay. Um, and so you'll see that when you look at your, uh, one of the things I want you to start to understand is your own health records and stuff like that. So when they measure your blood, they'll give you a level how much triglycerides are in your blood, okay? Okay. Okay, in addition to true lipids, you have things that are lipid related, um, like cholesterol, okay? Cholesterol is just, um, or steroids. So, all, so cholesterol is a, a form of steroid, okay? Most of the other steroids are directly or indirectly derived from cholesterol, okay? So, for example, this is cholesterol. I could take this cholesterol and modify it a little bit to make cortisol. I can make this, make this cholesterol and modify it a little bit to make estrogen or modify it a little bit to make testosterone and like progesterone and all these other hormones, okay? All right, uh, I can also make them uh, eicosanoids, so like, also those classic granulins, um, and thromboxanes, et cetera, and local trienes, et cetera, et cetera. All of these things are derived from fatty acids, okay? Um, and then left, very obviously derived from fatty acids, phospholipids, Okay, so phospholipids, um, instead of making a triglyceride, you have a diglyceride on the side and you have a phosphate group on the other side. Okay, so phospholipids, I'm sure you guys heard of the term phospholipid bilayer. Okay, uh, that's where this phospholipid comes from. Okay, okay the biochemistry of carbohydrates. Okay, uh, carbohydrates. Um, are sugars, okay? Uh, sugars usually come in uh, five carbon, six carbon, or seven carbon forms. The seven carbon is not very common, so I don't even show it here. Uh, but five, okay? Five in Latin is pent. So five carbon sugars are called pentosis, like pentagon. Okay, six carbon sugars are hexoses. Okay, uh, so the way the word breaks down, okay, pent is five, os is sugar. So anytime you see the word A O S E, you know it's sugar. For example, sucrose, okay, lactose, glucose, or an O S E. O S E is sugar. Okay. Um, hexose, six carbon sugar. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. So I can take six carbon sugars, okay, and, and five carbon sugars as well, but it really doesn't happen in the body very often. You take six carbon sugars and combine them together. So each one of these is called a monosaccharide. You join together two monosaccharides, you get a disaccharide. Okay. Um, a lot of the sugars that we commonly think about uh, malt sugar, maltose, sucrose is table sugar, lactose is milk sugar, um, are actually disaccharides. They have two. Monosaccharides join together, okay, as a disaccharide. Okay, mono and disaccharides are used for a quick energy source. Okay, they're easily dissolvable in blood, they're easily broken down into ATP, 
Um, so we use them as a quick energy source. Okay, fats we use as a secondary energy source. Okay, um, but monoglycerides and diglycerides we use as a very quick energy source. Okay, if you stick together disaccharides, which are much larger molecules, you would get something called a polysaccharide. Polysaccharides um, are used for two reasons. One, they're a storage sugar like glycogen or starch. Okay, these are storage things. Um, they're for to pack sugar tightly together so you can store them easier, but you can still release them when you need it. Okay, so th these are for storage. Okay, another thing we can do is actually change the sugars so they're indigestible in chitin and cellulose. Okay, and those are for um, <coughs> building structures like plants. The reason why we can make trees and stuff that are so big and strong are because they're primarily made out of cellulose. Okay, and they're structural, they're called structural polysaccharides because they're used to build structure. Okay. Okay. All right, the next thing um, I wanna make sure you guys understand is um, Amino acids, okay. So amino acids, okay. So all amino acids, okay, have two groups, okay. So they have a amino group here and an acid group there, okay. Amino acids always, okay. Um, and then each different amino acid has a different R group. The R is what makes the different amino acids different from one other. Okay. And when you combine amino acids, you can combine the acid portion on one side to the amino portion on the other side. Okay. That particular bond is a really strong bond called a peptide bond. Okay, so you form a peptide bond. When you string these amino acids together, you form a polypeptide. Okay, all right. Okay, uh, each amino acid has three letters of abbreviation and a one letter symbol for it. You do not have to learn, you do not have to memorize what they are. Okay, so don't spend time memorizing the chart. Okay, so um, proteins have multiple levels of structure. Okay, there are 20 amino acids that go into forming, or 20 different amino acids that go into forming proteins. Okay, uh, if you think of them like Letters of the alphabet that kind of works. Okay. Um, peptides, okay, range in length from two to two million amino acids. So think of a word with two million letters to it. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. So we're talking about oligo peptides, which are really short peptides. Two to nine amino acids. These are usually hormones. Um, polypeptides usually range from 10 to 100 amino acids, um, sometimes a little longer. And proteins are, are greater than 100 amino acids, okay? Much, much longer, okay? Okay. So the primary structure of the protein, okay? So there's four levels to protein structure. The first, it's primary, secondary, okay, tertiary, quadrant. One, two, three, four. Okay, the first level of the primary structure is literally the sequence of amino acids. 
how the amino acids are lined up next to each other. Okay, what follows what? Like which amino acid follows which amino acid follows which amino acid. Okay. Once you put those the primary structures together, a normal secondary structure will form. Okay. The secondary structure is created primarily by hydrogen bonding. Okay, um, I, there will be a hydrogen on this side and there will be OH on this side and they will bond exactly like that and they will form, okay, um, two different types of things, something called alpha helix and something called beta, beta sheet or beta strand or simply beta sheet. Okay, so um, they don't always form these two. Sometimes they don't have, so there are parts of the protein that don't have secondary structure, okay, but the secondary structure are alpha helices and beta sheets. Okay. Okay, okay so. Here you see like there are beta sheets, okay, and there are alpha helices, okay, um, and there are regions where there are no secondary structure. Okay. Sometimes the whole thing is secondary structure, like collagen right here. This is all alpha helix all the way through. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Tertiary structure is the um, proteins, actually they shouldn't be proteins, it should be polypeptide. Okay. Oops, this should be polypeptide. Okay, polypeptide three-dimensional shape. Okay. Okay. So finally, okay, a protein, okay, is the quaternary structure, okay, of um, of polypeptides. Sorry polypeptides put together. So you take this structure here, okay, you make four of them, you put them together, and that's the quaternary structure. Okay, so this is one subunit of hemoglobin, okay? Um, for every hemoglobin molecule, there's four of them, and so you put them together in this format, and you have one, two, three, four, okay? And you get hemoglobin. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, the last group is nucleotides. Okay. Um, nucleotides break down into groups. Okay. Um, you have a new. So this is a nucleotide. A nucleotide has three parts. So make sure you know all three parts. It has a base. It has a sugar, okay, um, and then it has a phosphate group, okay. The, the base can be um, split into two types, purines and pyrimidines, okay. Purines have two rings to them, okay. Pyrimidines have one ring to them, okay. The way I remember uh, purines, okay, uh, the first two letters in purine, uh, sorry, the first two letters in pyrimidines is pi, and the pi is circular, so it only has one ring. And what you do with pies is you cut pies. So the uh, uh, the nucleotides that are pyrimidines are C, U, and T. You cut pies. Okay. 
So, and then the other two are purines, okay? Okay, okay so um, we can skip this, but you can see like nucleotide ATP, um, I'm sure you guys learned ATP, ADP, NADH, NADH, FADH2, et cetera, et cetera. All of these are actually based on um, nucleotides, okay? Okay. Okay, I'm sure you guys have seen the double helix DNA. Okay, so here's the double helix of DNA. So what happens is DNA, simply explained, it looks, if you draw it in 2D, looks like a ladder. Okay, you have the two sides of the ladder. Okay, and then you have the rungs on the ladder. The two sides of the ladder is the phosphate sugar. Okay, phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar. So that usually, okay, is the phosphate sugar backbone. Okay, the rungs of the ladder are the new, uh, are the nucleotides or so the electrons bases. Okay, and the way they match up, you always have a pyrimidine mashup with the purine. Okay, so one ring and then two rings, and then, or two rings and then one ring. Okay, so in the middle. Okay, the rungs of the ladder will always like there will always be three, one, two, three, three rings. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, that's one of the ways that we check our DNA for mutations. If there there's two rings, they will be too small to they'll, they'll be empty space. If there are four rings, they'll be too large to fit. Okay, so there's always going to be three rings in the middle here. Okay. Okay. okay, so because periods are larger than permanent, you always form three, always one period and one permanent. Okay. So according to this kind of turgra, you figure out that um, these always by the C's. Okay, so the rules are called targa. C's always by the cheese or cheese always by the C's. Okay, uh, so they form three hydrogen bonds between them. Okay, so they're more stable. Okay, A's always by the T's and DNA. Okay, so A T bond has two hydrogen bonds in RNA. RNA has uracil and not thymine, so um, A by the mutes, okay? All right, okay. Um, I will stop this lesson right here, so I will report part two, okay, um, on this thing, uh, but not as part of this recording. All right, so hopefully this recording makes sense. See you guys.